Genetic engineering is a process where scientists take genes from one species and force it into the DNA of other species. Every single independent study conducted on the impact of genetically modified food shows that it damages organs, it causes infertility, it causes immune system failure, it causes holes in the GI tract, it causes multiple organ system failure. The whole concept of genetically modified organisms is throwing a monkey wrench in the life on this planet. What if we could produce more yield on the same amount of land, squeeze more water from a single raindrop, conserve natural resources while caring for the environment? Monsanto is the company that told us that PCBs were safe. They told us that Agent Orange was safe. They told us that DDT was safe. And now they're in charge of telling us if their own genetically modified foods are safe. The reason why we have 170 million acres of genetically engineered corn and soybeans and cotton and canola oil and sugar beets in the United States is because it doesn't have to be labeled. The first genetically modified animal, a salmon, may soon be approved for human consumption. Both these fish are 18 months old, but the larger genetically engineered Aqua Advantage salmon grows twice as fast as the regular salmon. There has not been sufficient animal health testing, human health testing, or environmental impact testing of these new transgenic fish. Basically, they've taken agriculture and built an industrial model which doesn't fit nature. So instead of changing their agricultural model to accommodate what is natural, they're changing nature to accommodate the industrial model. If you have an organic corn crop that sits next to a genetically engineered corn field, and it happens to tassel at the same time, and it happens to be downwind, you're going to get your crop contaminated. The rest of the food supply is contaminated. Then the genie is out of the bottle, and it's maybe physically impossible to turn the situation around. In the genetic engineering revolution, these seeds are now patented property of one corporation called Monsanto. The pharmaceutical industry has no interest in having you well because they don't make any money if you're well. And the pharmaceutical industry is the biotech industry. Some people think that GMO really means God move over. We are heading downhill at a rapid rate of speed toward our own extinction. The use of GM in agriculture is a risk that is simply not worth taking. Any scientist that looks into the, to the research or the lack of research uh, on the, the safety of genetically engineered food comes to the conclusion that um, these foods should not be on the market. They need another decade or two of uh, research. Monsanto is the company that told us that PCBs were safe. They were convicted of actually poisoning people in their town next to the PCB factory and fined $700 million. They told us that Agent Orange was safe. They told us that DDT was safe and now they're in charge of telling us if their own genetically modified foods are safe. Because the FDA doesn't require a single safety study, they leave it to Monsanto. I know Monsanto, as one of the officials of the organization said, we're here to make money. And that's not just Monsanto, that's a lot of food industries. Their job is to make money for the investor. Unfortunately, that becomes the highest priority thought in their minds. Make money, make money, make money. They're not actually making products to make health. They're making money. And so they tend to overlook the health consequences. I think that is a ridiculous sort of approach to the problem. There should be some responsibility being assumed by the producer that when they're producing food, they have a reasonably good assurance that it's a good quality product. That should be the highest priority thing. And then if they can make money with that, fine and dandy. But unfortunately, it's usually the other way around. People in this sort of business are looking for opportunities to make money first priority. And then in this case, maybe letting somebody else worry about the health consequences, maybe even the public. 
And I, I said, we have it upside down. That is simply upside down. Why did the FDA abdicate their responsibility to protect us? The White House had instructed the FDA to promote biotechnology under the first Bush administration. And so the FDA created a new position for Michael Taylor, Monsanto's former attorney. So Michael Taylor was in charge of policy at the FDA when this GMO policy was created, and then he became Monsanto's vice president, and under the Obama administration was put back in the FDA as the U.S. food safety czar. In reality, the overwhelming consensus among the scientists at the FDA were not only that GMOs were different, but that they were inherently dangerous, that they might create allergies, toxins, new diseases, and nutritional problems. They had urged their superiors to require long-term study, and when they saw drafts of the policy coming back to them, they were angry and urged their political appointees to change course. But Michael Taylor and the political appointees ignored the science, ignored the scientists, denied the existence of their concerns, and set forth a policy that allowed GMOs to be put on the market in a way that, that creates unprecedented risk for human beings and the environment. The FDA is composed of smart people, but they're smart people with a conflict of interest. They're smart people who make their decisions based on what will support their financial needs or their academic needs, not what makes scientific sense. What you can do with GMOs is basically engineer food in ways that make it most profitable from the company's perspective. But from the company's perspective, whatever negative aspects of that might exist are simply irrelevant. And more than being irrelevant, the company is motivated to try to suppress knowledge about those negative aspects. The company is motivated to try to suppress government attempts to regulate in relation to those negative aspects. Uh, the company is motivated to try to infiltrate government and lobby government. I mean, when you look at um, uh, the Clinton administration, Bush Sr., Bush Jr., and Obama, uh, you look at um, various high-ranking positions in the administrations of all of those presidents, you find people who have worked for Monsanto. Most people don't realize that Monsanto has been around for about a century. They've acquired lots of resources, and they are very clever and sophisticated. They know how the game works. They understand lobbying. They understand bribery. They have been effective at essentially stacking the political structure, the federal regulatory agencies in their favor to the point that it's almost physically impossible to pass any type of federal regulations or legislation because the people who make those choices are, are, have been in the revolving door of Monsanto. They either previously worked for them or they're paid consultants for them. The governments now, wherever they are, are dependent on corporations. Who are these governments? Who are these companies, corporations, telling people what to do, what to eat, what to feed their children? We are people. We're the children of God. We have constitutions. We have our constitutional rights to eat and feed our families that nature produces. They say, no, we don't have that right. In fact, we're going to force that on you. It's the FDA and the USDA who helped lead the charge for these new food safety bills. There's nothing in those bills to protect you. It's there to protect the genetic engineering industry. And unfortunately, if we don't stop this, you won't see organic farmers. The laws in the bills currently are so strict, so, so arbitrary, that if you are a small organic farmer, you can't meet their requirements for safety. As a result, you'll go out of business. Not a single human being on earth gets up and says, boy, I can't wait to go to the supermarket and buy a GMO food. And why is that? That's because after 30 years and hundreds of billions of dollars of public and private investment, they haven't been able to come up with one thing in this food that actually helps the consumer. No better taste, no lower price, no more nutrition, nothing, zip, zero, nada. 
85% of all the genetically engineered crops in this country and around the world are designed so you can soak them with weed killers, toxic herbicides. And who are the big companies that do this? Come on, you know who they are. Monsanto, anybody, what, who else? DuPont, Dow Chemical, Syngenta, Bayer. What, what kind of companies are these? Chemical companies. As the chemical seed package has spread, and now with genetically engineered seed, seed that originally was free in India because it belonged to the farmers, or was low cost because it was released from the public sector universities that did seed breeding. In the genetic engineering revolution, these seeds are now patented property of one corporation called Monsanto. They take genetic material, either DNA or RNA, and insert it using very sophisticated techniques and create an artificial life form, a transgenic species that is impossible to reproduce in nature because the reproductive organs don't match. And as a result, once this form is created, here's the danger. It can cross-pollinate, it can contaminate the traditional crops. Percy Schmeiser was a farmer in Canada who was contaminated by Monsanto's genetically modified seed. Well, he realized he'd been contaminated because he used some of this herbicide to kill off weeds around utility poles on his property. When he saw some of the seed uh, did not die from the application of glyphosate, he knew it must be genetically modified. Well, he didn't do anything to purge his property of that contaminated seed. It would actually take three years of taking your crops out of use before you could completely purge them of the genetically modified seed. He decided he didn't want to do that because that would be costly. So he saved his seed for planting the following year. And Monsanto said, well, you now knew that you had genetically modified seed. You saved it for planting a second year. That's infringement. They sued him for patent infringement. It went all the way up to the Canadian Supreme Court. And although they found that technically he did infringe their patent, they awarded Monsanto no damages. Both in Canada and the United States, hundreds of farmers have been totally bankrupt, lost their farms and so on through lawsuits by Monsanto. So there's a real fear. Now we call it the new fear, a fear culture amongst farmers where a corporation now through the rights of patents on, on a gene have, uh, which is inserted into a seed to make it resistant to a chemical or whatever, is that they lose their rights to use their own seeds or plants. So it's total control eventually that farmers have to go back to a corporation like Monsanto each year to buy their seed they're, as because they're no longer allowed to use their own seeds. So as a victim, you basically have to pay for the, your lawsuit, your damages, and so on. So farmers become victims because, and they have done nothing wrong because they were contaminated by a neighbor, by whatever means, by pollen flow, by seeds blown in the wind, transportation, and so on. So it doesn't matter how it happens. If you are contaminated, it's over and it's over. It's inevitable that someone who does not want to use their seed will become contaminated. Even the United States National Organic Program standards acknowledge this when they say you won't lose your organic certification if you're contaminated up to a certain percentage as long as you take efforts to try to avoid that contamination. Monsanto has said that it's the responsibility of an organic farmer to use large portions of their own property to set up buffer zones to try to decrease the likelihood that they'll be contaminated by their neighbors. But that's quite perverse when it's their seed that's the new entrant into the neighborhood. In the mid-90s, the UK government gave about three million bucks to a scientist to figure out how to test for the safety of GMOs. That scientist was Dr. Arpad Pustai, the world's leading expert in his field. He worked at the top nutritional research laboratory in the UK, one of the best in the world. He had about 20 or 30 researchers working with him in three different institutes. And his protocols that he was designing were supposed to be implemented into EU law as requirements for the safety assessments of any GMOs to be introduced into Europe. He took a potato that was genetically engineered to produce an insecticide and fed one group of rats the genetically engineered potato. He fed another group of rats natural potatoes, and a third group of rats natural potatoes, plus their meal was spiked with the same insecticide that the GM potato was engineered to produce. So you have GM potato, natural potato, and natural potato plus an insecticide, 
and all three had a completed balanced diet as well. We measured all sorts of things, growth for example, how these young animals were growing, uh, what happened to their inside, and what happened to their immune system. And uh, it became clear uh, that uh, the GM had a, a slower growth. It had uh, problems with uh, internal uh, development of its organs, and it certainly uh, knocked out the immune system. Only the rats that ate the GM potato got sick. They had potentially precancerous cell growth in their digestive tract, smaller brains, livers, and testicles, partial atrophy of the liver, damaged immune system in 10 days. What was the cause of that damage? It was not the insecticide because the group eating the insecticide did not have the problem. It was understood that it was the process of genetic engineering itself and the unpredicted side effects that caused this profound damage to every system and organ study. He shared his concerns about GMOs and was a hero for about two days at his prestigious institute. The press was going wild. He was a main scientist who was saying that we should not treat the people as guinea pigs and that he personally wouldn't eat GMOs from what he understood. The director of his institute received two phone calls from the UK Prime Minister's office. The next day, Dr. Arpad Pustai was fired from his job after 35 years, silenced with threats of a lawsuit. His team was disbanded. They never implemented the protocols. Instead, a campaign was launched to destroy his reputation in order to promote and protect the reputation of biotechnology. We do have uh, all the methods available for testing, testing the safety of, uh, of uh, GM uh, crops. It will be unforgiven by uh, humanity Monsanto scientists found bacteria growing in a chemical waste dump near their factory in the presence of Roundup herbicide. Now Roundup normally kills bacteria. This bacteria was surviving. They said, great, let's put it in the food supply. So they took the gene from the bacterium that allowed it to survive the Roundup and put it into soybeans. And now those Roundup ready soybeans can be sprayed with Roundup herbicide and they don't die. Just all of the other plant biodiversity in the ground dies. The active ingredient in Roundup is called glyphosate. Glyphosate was patented in 1964, not as an herbicide, but as a broad spectrum chelator. It hugs a lot of different minerals that are needed and does not allow the plants to access them. It also destroys some beneficial microorganisms in the soil, which normally provide nutrients to the plant. It also promotes pathogenic organisms in the soil which then overrun the plant. And so it creates weaker plants, stronger disease, and the disease does the killing. Now, what do the livestock in the United States eat? They eat largely Roundup Ready crops, Roundup Ready soy, corn, cottonseed, canola mash, sugar beet pulp, and soon alfalfa. So a huge percentage of their food intake is Roundup Ready crops. Now remember, Roundup pulls the nutrients out of the crop. It makes them unavailable. So now we have millions of livestock eating nutrient deficient food. And what do we eat? We eat plants and we eat animals and take their milk. So it turns out it's a perfect storm now, not just for plant disease, but for animal and human disease. When 44,000 secret FDA memos were made public from a lawsuit about the subject of genetic engineering, the director of the Center for Veterinary Medicine made it absolutely clear that GMOs in animal feed had a unique danger. Toxins can bioaccumulate in animals and in their milk. And so if there were toxins in genetically modified feed, then we might have higher levels of those toxins in the animals that eat the feed or in their milk or other products from those animals. All our food, 90% of Canadian crops, American crops now are produced by genetic modification, or at least they're contaminated. 
was genetically modified corn, genetically modified soybean, genetically modified everything. 95% of all the genetic modifications are done in order to allow the plants to survive more chemicals being sprayed on them and to allow the animals to survive more drugs being put into them. And of course what happens is that when their genes are changed, our genes are changed by consuming them, just as the super weeds and the super bugs are genetically altered by consuming them. The bug eats the plant, its genes change. The animal eats the, the plant, its genes change. We eat the animal or the plant, our genes change. Our babies' genes change. And the change is permanent. They do not want you to know which products you're buying in the grocery store might contain genetically engineered ingredients. They say that that, that label would confuse consumers. And they say there's no difference between genetically modified foods and non-GMO foods. Well, that's absurd. That's what the word modified means in genetically modified. It is modified, it is different, and it is, in many ways, a threat to the health of the people of our nation and people around the world. Genetic engineering is a process where scientists take genes from one species and force it into the DNA of other species. Even though there's been very little study on the health dangers, there's been sufficient evidence of harm to cause the American Academy of Environmental Medicine to say all doctors should prescribe non-GMO diets to everyone. They say that the animal feeding studies link GMOs to reproductive problems, immune system problems, accelerated aging, organ damage, gastrointestinal distress, dysfunctional regulation of cholesterol and insulin, to name a few. If you take the gene of a cow that helps it to produce milk, that produces a hormone called the bovine growth hormone. And if you take that hormone and you start injecting into the cow, the idea here is then the cow will produce more milk. The companies like Monsanto and Eli Lilly, who invented these, uh, this hormone independently, and they said there's nothing wrong in doing that because it's substantially the same hormone that the cow produces. That is wrong. Because even if you take natural bovine growth hormone and you give injections of it to cows, then the cows will get sick. Just like if you took human insulin and you started to inject human insulin back to people, they will get insulin shock, they could die. But the cow, receiving this hormone will actually be sick. It'll have pus in its milk because it's producing too much milk. The teat canal of the cows will get infected, will have to be treated with antibiotics. When the Canadians were evaluating bovine growth hormone, uh, the senior scientists there testified before the Senate that Monsanto had offered them a bribe of one to two million dollars to approve RBGH without further study. They say documents were stolen from a locked file cabinet in the government's office, that they were being pressured to approve the drug which they thought was of questionable safety. What we have is rigged research, hijacked regulatory agencies where many people at the agency, at the FDA, that was approving this bovine growth hormone were from Monsanto. Monsanto's former attorney, two former researchers. In fact, Richard Burroughs, who was an independent veterinarian working at the FDA, he was fired. He was told he was slowing up the approval process. Well, he sued and was reinstated back at the FDA, but during the trial, his boss admitted that the whole thing was a setup to get him out. He was in the way of the approval of bovine growth hormone. In the U.S., there's uh, been recent, there's evidence that uh, articles have been published that scientists who do any research on that possibly could be, show negative results of uh, genetically engineered crops are harassed they are denied funds, uh, the universities uh, that depend on, on industry money um, are pressured to not uh, allow this or, or to discourage this kind of research. Monsanto's own research shows that when rats were fed this BT corn, they had signs of toxicity in the liver and kidneys. When genetically modified soybeans were fed to rodents, We've seen changes in the testicles, testicles changing from pink to blue, changes in the sperm cells, changes in the uterus and ovaries, in the DNA functioning of the embryo offspring. 
In 2001, a small California biotech company called Epicyte patented a product, patented a gene, which causes both men and women who eat it in the form of any product to produce antibodies to sperm. If the men eat the epicyte gene, they produce antibodies to their own sperm, rendering them irreversibly sterile. If women eat the epicyte gene, when they have intercourse, their bodies produce antibodies to the sperm that has been deposited and they become infertile through the destruction of the sperm. Now, DuPont and Monsanto formed a joint venture, purchased the epicyte firm, and, quote, commercialized the epicyte gene. Do you want to know if the food that you're eating contains the epicyte gene? Sure you do. How about the food that your children are eating or your grandchildren? Sure you do. We've seen smaller babies, a death rate that's five times that compared to controls. Sterile babies, even babies with hair growing in their mouths. And this has been done by government scientists as well as independent scientists who are at the top of their field. Pay close attention to what you're about to see. These rats have been fed with transgenic corn during their entire life cycle. The tumors they suffer from are enormous. The study that revealed the effect of the GMOs on the health of these rats has just been completed. It lasted for two years. We spent over a year trying to obtain transgenic corn because no GMO manufacturers were willing to provide them. This is because Monsanto requires contracts to be signed stipulating that the seeds must not be used for testing. We wanted our study to be independent. Every rat was dissected to identify the way each diet, GMO, GMO and Roundup, and Roundup on its own, had acted on the metabolism of each animal, focusing on the development rate of the tumors that only start to manifest themselves after the initial three-month period. Each step up represents a large tumor, which can measure 17 millimeters by 17 millimeters. 94 percent of them take effect in the mammary glands, which would equate to breast cancer in a woman. We are faced with renal tumors for the males. Some males also suffer from mammary tumors. One could have thought that the main cause of death was coming from the pesticide added to the corn. But what the study highlighted, and this for the first time ever, is the fact that the transgenesis itself could have killed the rats. What this means is that just by interfering with the genome of the plant in order to modify it, we are faced with repercussions that no one could have anticipated. This is enough to make us reconsider all the scientific precepts that led to the creation of GMOs. We realized that GMOs without any Roundup residue were responsible for an increase in the death rate of females and of some males. This is the GMO that is being eaten by the Americans, but also the GMO that has been approved for importation by European agencies, and that contaminates our food. When they allow animals to graze on the cotton plants after harvest in India, for years and years there was no problem. When they introduced this BT toxin producing cotton, thousands of sheep died, buffalo died, goats died. I've interviewed the people myself, seen pictures of their dead animals. These animals were, were successfully grazing on non-BT cotton plants for years. In one case, 13 buffalo grazed on BT cotton plants for a single day, and within three days, they were all dead. Unfortunately, there's not sufficient follow-up. One small non-governmental organization pleaded with the government in India, please do some research on these animals. The government refused. They pleaded with universities offering to pay for the research themselves. They refused. So this small NGO did their own research. They put three sheep in one field with BT cotton Bolgard 1, three with Bolgard 2, and three with non-GM cotton. Within a month, all six sheep eating the BT cotton plants died. But three eating the non-BT cotton plants had no symptoms. But their research was dismissed because it wasn't a government agency or a university. So we have a situation where the evidence is there but it's not being paid attention to because it's being drowned out by the big bucks and the biotech industry with their tobacco type science 
and their distortion and denial of the facts. Unfortunately, Monsanto's uh, lobbying power and their financial weight, they are able to use con corrupted uh, corporate science, something that I call cigarette science, to get these, these uh, products um, slipped into our food stream. The only human feeding study ever published on GMOs showed that the gene that was inserted into the soybean transferred into the DNA of the bacteria living inside our intestines and continue to produce that protein. So if it happens to be an allergen and you're allergic to it, you may be continuously triggered over and over again by the production of that allergen from within inside your own intestines. When we look at the quality of the nutrients in our soil, we see that that has become actually a victim of industrial agriculture which destroys the microorganisms in the soil and then puts in a few nutrients as if that were enough to provide a healthy diet. It turns out that the current industrial agricultural model was based on surplus military products after World War II. They had extra bomb-making material that worked as fertilizer, so they created the synthetic fertilizer industry. They had excess nerve gas that they could use as insecticides, so they created an insecticidal industry. And by s steering the farmers and the land-grant universities and all the population towards these high-input, corporate-driven agricultural models, we actually stripped away some of the health and some of the nutrients that were vital and are vital to the health of the people and of the livestock. The plant's ability to absorb nutrients out of the soil is restricted with GMO seeds and plants. And that's why the nutritional value is going down. And that has become a very big concern. And there's a very big concern that many of our foods that we eat, nutritional value contents have to be rechecked because it has changed. It alters the structure of a plant when you use, put a GMO gene into a plant. So you no longer have the same type of plant and you've changed the makeup. Monsanto is the only company I know of that doesn't want you to know you're buying something that has their technology inside it. You know, cell phones, computers, automobiles, everything else we purchase, clothing, is branded because everyone wants to know, they want consumers to know that their product is inside whatever you're purchasing. But Monsanto wants that to be a secret. If you go and purchase any of their bags of seed and you look at the back, there's a big, huge box with a big stop sign. And when I first saw this, I thought that meant stop, this seed is dangerous. Don't swallow it, wash your hands after you've touched it. You know, all those health warnings are lower down the bag in smaller font. If you look in the box where the stop sign is, it actually says stop. These seeds are protected by the following patents. Your use of these seeds uh, must be in compliance with the license agreement. You may not save the seeds for replanting, blah, 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 blah. So they object to labeling of food that consumers buy, but they have no problem with labeling their own product with all of their patent numbers. So there's some things that they want the public to know and other things that they don't. Traditionally, the uh, proponents of genetic engineering have, have uh, stated that there's relatively no risk or essentially no difference between genetically engineered plants and products and, and conventionally raised products. Well, new studies dispute this quite widely. There was a study done last year in the uh, journal Reproductive Toxicology that showed that over 93% of genetically engineered toxins were found in the blood of pregnant women and 80% in the fetuses. So this potent uh, crop toxin is being transferred into the population. Genetically modified soybeans has as much as seven times the amount of a known allergen compared to non-GM when the two are cooked. With corn, there's a gene that's normally shut off in corn, but it's switched on accidentally in Monsanto's corn and that gene produces a known allergen. There's also more herbicides used on these genetically modified herbicide tolerant crops like Roundup Ready Soy, and the excessive herbicides might promote allergic type reactions. Peer reviewed studies show that there's an association between heavy GMO consumption and serious health problems, including asthma and food allergies. 
There's also a damage to the pancreas and the production of enzymes that are used for digestion in mice that are fed GM soy. If we take longer to digest proteins, then that means eating genetically modified soy might cause us to be reactive to a wide variety of foods, not just to GM soy. The real risk here, the real concern is if these threats to the food supply are validated and there is the GE crops are the predominant crops and they've contaminated the rest of the food supply, then the genie is out of the bottle and it's maybe physically impossible to turn the situation around. There has been no long-term research uh, on the concept or consequences of what this genetic modification does, not just to us, but to the environment. And right now, from all the research that's showing up, it says this has a very negative and profound effect on destroying the environment in which we live. So therefore, I find it senseless that the government would support and condone genetically modified foods without even having the basic research to understand the liabilities involved in creating these monster organisms and putting them into our world. The conversation in Europe and in countries in South America and in Asia is much more sophisticated in terms of its understanding of science, the importance of independent peer-reviewed science that isn't contaminated or corrupted by corporate influence. Here in the United States, you know, the birthplace, the bedrock of the free market system and democracy, we are having our rights corrupted by corporate influence. Uh, the major uh, impact that uh, Monsanto has, their ability to get their products approved with minimal uh, scientific oversight and minimal review of these products for human health testing is really an abomination. The entire scientific foundation underneath genetically modified organisms is false because organisms are not genetically determined. And when we understand that, we recognize that the only way to create crops that will benefit humanity is to understand nature herself and learn to live in harmony with it. And this is a completely different approach than humans have had for the last couple hundred years, where we always thought, oh, humans' job was to control and dominate nature. In that process, we are now leading the world into the sixth mass extinction of life on this planet. Five times in the history of this planet, life essentially got wiped out and started all over again. The five previous mass extinctions are attributed to things like comets or asteroids hitting the earth and destroying the environment. We are now deep into the sixth mass extinction of life on this planet. We are losing species of organisms faster than even in the previous five mass extinctions. But the source of the problem is much closer to home than a comet or an asteroid. Science has recognized that it's human behavior that is undermining the web of life. Rather than trying to control nature, our mission is actually how to learn to live in harmony with nature. The FDA, which treats the American people as slaves, knows that if people knew the truth about how healing their foods can be and how dangerous the processed foods really are with all their chemical contaminants and their genetic modification. If people knew the truth, they would demand food freedom. They would demand access to healing herbal therapies and healing dietary supplements. They would demand that the FDA back down from its intimidation campaigns that have been le leveled against producers of dietary supplements and herbal remedies and raw dairy products and so on. The people would demand that if they knew, and that is why they are kept ignorant under this campaign of disinformation currently being waged by the FDA. I've been vigorous in my opposition of these strategies that these large corporations use to use their influence for their benefit. And as a result of that, my positions, uh, I'm frequently criticized by their own local networks, the skeptic networks and such. And they're also their ability, because they are so uh, politically connected, to use the federal regulatory agencies to come after me personally to file claims against, or statements against my uh, company, and also to criticize me uh, such that it can be viewed 
in most of the traditional media to skew the information, the truth of what we're saying. They twist the tables. It looks like we're the, the bad guys when actually nothing could be further from the truth. We're just seeking to, to, to help people understand what, what the true reality here is here and give them the tools to, to make that distinction and make, give them the right to know. In the early 2000s, uh, Montana, the biotech industry, uh, vilified a scientist for his uh, linking of um, Bt corn to a decrease in monarch populations. Two years ago, uh, another research paper came out confirming that yes, Monsanto's Bt corn and their Bt cotton products were actually reducing the habitat of monarch butterflies. Monarch butterflies are the canary in the coal mine on the prairies in the Midwest. Of the major uh, impacts the negative environmental impacts that these products are having. The large-scale cultivation of GMO crops can harm biodiversity in a number of different ways. One is that in the case where the crop is engineered to be tolerant to a herbicide, such as Roundup or glufosinate, then the application of high doses of these, of these weed killers destroys the weeds upon which other organisms normally would be consuming. So the insect population is reduced and then there isn't the insect population upon which the birds are also consuming. So there could be a knock-on effect on the biodiversity within the fields where herbicide tolerant crops are being grown and indeed large-scale field trials sponsored by the UK government several years ago now did indeed find that in fields that were growing herbicide tolerant sugar beet and canola that the biodiversity in these fields was markedly reduced. There's a lot of information now on bee colony collapse, and, uh, and uh, it's now linked to certain of the chemicals that are sold by certain of the major companies. So there's a lot of concern now about the bees dying because now we lose a major uh, insect that, uh, that pollinates our, our, uh, our plants. And so that also has become a big concern, but it's all related, it all goes back to the massive increase of new types of more powerful, uh, uh, chemicals, more toxic chemicals than we ever, ever had before. And that's why we have a, many of our beneficial insects are being killed by these new types of chemicals. GM carries novel health and environmental risks, which we are now beginning to measure, both in terms of environmental impact and also outcomes in feeding trials, controlled feeding trials in animals, then I feel that the use of GM in agriculture is a risk that is simply not worth taking. GM doesn't address root causes of problems in agriculture. At best, it is a symptomatic cover-up. No genetically modified crop can grow unless it's attached to some kind of a pesticide. Those pesticides, more and more, are in these plants, they may have killed the weeds, they may have killed the insects, but the product is still on the plants, and if it's washed off, then it's in the water, it gets into the lakes, it gets into the oceans, it's everywhere. And it's toxic, it causes cancer, it also causes endocrine disruption. That's a technical term for change of hormones. They don't even want to label that this is genetically modified. The milk is genetically modified or the crop is genetically modified. They say, if we label that, we won't be able to sell it because people won't buy it. Of course, people won't buy it because people don't want it. We have thousands of different varieties of any given food crop you can mention. And by simply dipping in to this already existing reservoir of varieties of crops, resurrecting old crop varieties which have been displaced could readily meet our food needs without having to resort to the risky procedures associated with, with GM. What is an herbicide resistant crop 
It's a crop that you can spray the hell out of it with a toxic chemical and it won't die. It kills everything except that particular crop. And, and so you have the ability not only to sell the seeds to the farmer, you're gonna sell them the companion pesticide. So you get two sales for one, uh, and they're gonna to have to come back to you every year and get them. Uh, because once you start applying these poisons on this scale, uh, your farmland is so devastated that uh, to convert to organic, for, for example, is uh, economically difficult. The most comprehensive analysis of GMOs shows that they actually reduce yield. But sustainable technologies, they can increase yield by an average of 79%. What BT corn does and BT soy does and what Roundup Ready does is it, it decreases labor. It's labor saving, as if we need less farmers in this country. And we have a limited planet, so more people farming will be is the key to higher yields, not chemicals. GMOs are stealing the money away from these more appropriate technologies. We have more food per person than any time in human history. We have enough food grown to feed 11.3 billion people. What we don't have is the ability for people to access that food. And so it's not a silver bullet of increased yield that the biotech industry tries to sell us. The ISTAD report proved that organic and sustainable agriculture had the same and higher yields than conventional, chemical intensive, genetically engineered crops. These herbicides are actually having a major impact in killing the beneficial soil microorganisms in the soil, which actually not only add to the yield gains, but also the nutritional value of these plants. Cotton production has increased in this country because of acreage, not because of the BT technology. Rice and wheat production increased in India because of irrigation and acreage. Land and water account for it, not the seed and the chemicals. In fact, the seed and chemicals have created a scarcity. First, the new seeds had to be grown as monoculture, so you had less food. Today, we are importing pulses from Canada, from the United States very vital to a vegetarian diet. We're not growing pulses because our monocultures have no place for pulses. Pulses give you free protein. Pulses give you free nitrogen fixing. All of that was wiped out. All seeds, farm trees, agroforestry, the water use of this so-called Green Revolution was 10 times more compared to equivalent farming systems. One huge problem with the GMOs is that they have completely blown out conventional breeding in the, our, our land-grant colleges. And we only in this country have 10% of the vegetable seeds that were available to our forebears 100 years ago. Our, our seed stock is going down the toilet and we can't even use our land-grant colleges to breed in a standard way because there's no money for it. And that is a huge, huge, huge threat to the future of agriculture to lose the skill of breeding standard, which is in fact what all that food you see on, the, on, on, on your grocery shelves, all those vegetables came from thousands of years of farmers sharing their seeds. As a result of the uh, loss of beneficial soil microorganisms, not only have the yields gone down, but there's been a dramatic increase in the rise of crop diseases, which are infecting corn and soybeans in the U.S. We're sacrificing, you know, our soil just because it's an easier way to farm. And, and trying to convince ourselves it's, it's more economical, but it's not. You know, I'm seeing neighbors' fields who've been doing this stuff for 15 plus years. They can't get rid of a lot of weeds now. These weeds are getting resistant to the glyphosate herbicide, so farmers are upping rates, more herbicide. And then all of a sudden, that's not doing it anymore, so you have to switch herbicides. So now the soil is just more and more and more full of poison. So there's going to be more sickness in that field. It's going to be more susceptible to diseases, insects. It won't make it through drought periods as long. The same crops side by side, right across from each other. The natural plants are going to make more over time. And you have a soil that you continue to poison, nature's going to win. In 2006, Cornell University released a study on soil degradation that stated by the year 2050 that 30% of the land that's already cultivated will be unfarmable. Now the thing about Roundup and glyphosate is that it stays in the soil for months or years. 
and it continues to cause the reduction of available nutrients and the promotion of these diseases. And so people like Dr. Huber, Dr. Don Huber from Purdue University, have identified more than 40 plant diseases that are on the rise in the U.S. because of the overuse of Roundup and other glyphosate-based herbicides. Now, it pulls these nutrients out of the food supply for months or years. According to Reuters, in 2007, there was about 184 million pounds of glyphosate herbicide used in the United States. Now, that's one of many, many years, hundreds of millions of pounds, which means hundreds of millions of pounds of nutrients have been tied up and taken out of the food supply. When we have a company like Monsanto that says, I don't care what nature says, I'll create the crops that I want, and we look at what happens, we see another step, another process in our own demise. This is a, a very powerful enemy, a, David, a classic David versus Goliath challenge. And there's the only way we have any approach, any possibility of ever winning this thing is if we work together as a cohesive group. The whole concept of genetically modified organisms is throwing a monkey wrench in the life on this planet. And until we change that, we are heading downhill at a rapid rate of speed toward our own extinction. Genetically modified organisms are living beings where genetics or DNA of one species is taken out and transported into artificially into another organism. And in other words, some sort of genetic manipulation, genetic engineering has occurred. Nature, God if you like, does not permit that. You cannot take the gene of a bacteria and put it into a pig or a people or anything like that, or vice versa. They've put spider genes into goats in the hopes that they can milk the goat to get spiderweb protein to make bulletproof vests. They've put cow genes into pigs and made cow hides on those pigs. They had what was called an enviro pig, a pig that would have manure that was less toxic. They can create these featherless chickens to kind of better uh, live in these tight battery cage, these small barren wire enclosures extending down long rows and often windowless sheds. It can be a million birds in a single um, shed. How do you do that? Well, without them overheating where you have this mass ventilation fans, but another way, you just take off their feathers. You There's a genetically modified salmon that was created by Canadian researchers that was tested up in Canada. They put these frankenfish into tanks and they fed them sufficient food and there was no problem. When they reduced the amount of food, the frankenfish freaked. They started killing and eating their neighbors. So what happens if the FDA approves these frankenfish and let's say they escape into the ocean? I don't know what's worse, the extinction of natural salmon or the roving of these frankenfish going around and killing and attacking other species and changing the whole ecosystem balance. They both have a mating advantage because they're larger, but they have a survival disadvantage. And it's that combination that should a male transgenic fish escape into the wild caused the, caused the rapid collapse and extinction of both transgenic and wild fish in as little as 50 generations. Scientists take genes from one species and force it into the DNA of other species. Now the process itself creates massive collateral damage in the plant or animal, but they don't test for those changes and the side effects before they introduce, say, the crop into our food supply. DNA is the inherited material of life. And it is where genes are structured. So we inherit half of our DNA from our mothers and half of our DNA from our fathers. And within the DNA are the genes that encode for all the structures of the body. So the DNA is like a blueprint. Just like an architect has a blueprint for a building, the DNA is the blueprint for the, all the structures of the body. So when the, a gene is switched on to function, the information within that gene is being used to manufacture a protein. And that protein is then builds the structure of the body. And then proteins in the form of enzymes 
carry out all of the chemical reactions of the body that constitute the, the living organism. When the GM gene is introduced into the plant, the en genetic engineer has no control over where the GM gene integrates or splices into the DNA of the plant. And the effect of this is that the GM transformation process as a whole actually is very disruptive on the DNA structure and function of the organism. As a result, very unpredictable and potentially hazardous outcomes. Because if you disturb the balance of gene function, remember the gene function is controlling the structure and the biochemistry of the organism. If you disrupt the balance of gene function, you disrupt the biochemistry. And if you disrupt the biochemistry, you run the risks of creating novel toxins, novel allergies, as well as a disturbance to nutritional value. These types of outcomes resulting from the disruptive effect of the GM transformation process have been observed, are observable, and they're genuine. With our understanding of epigenetics, the new science of how environmental signals control our genes, we're introduced into the chemistry of where do the signals come from that select the genes and modify our genetic activity. Well, we used to say everything was due to the genes, but now we find there's a class of molecules called microRNA. They're very small RNA molecules, and they're found in all the cells. And these microRNA molecules are molecules that adjust the reading of our genes. And well, a new understanding has been found about the microRNA molecules. And when we eat food, the microRNA from the food is picked up by the digestive system and not broken down. The microRNA is taken into our own body intact. And now what they followed is the microRNA from food ends up in our own cells, like in our liver and other cells in our body. And these microRNAs still have the same function. They change our genetics and they change our readout of our, our genome. And the significance is profound. It says when you eat genetically modified foods, we are eating a new class of microRNAs that have never really been in the world before. And yet, these microRNAs are picked up by our biology and adjust our own genetics. So, in a sense, the old story, we are what we eat, actually now has a biochemical foundation. And then all of a sudden it says, if that's true, then why would you risk your life eating a genetically modified food containing microRNAs that can totally distort our own biology and cause great problems in our lives? The process of genetic modification is a completely irreversible process. Once it has been carried out, it affects the reproductive cells of the organism. So any effect you have, for good or for bad, is then passed down through the subsequent generations of that particular organism. And that's true for plants and animals, indeed for any genetically modified organism. And this now has to be understood because when we eat genetically modified foods, not only does it affect our own cells like that, but we also know that the bacteria in our gut that are required for our survival, we need these bacteria. The bacteria also pick up the genetic engineered genes and we modified the gut bacteria. And you say, well, why is that relevant? Well, not only do we need the gut bacteria for our survival, but the gut bacteria change our genetics. Information from the bacteria is picked up by the digestive cells and adjusts the digestive system cells to be compatible with the bacteria in our gut. There is a dialogue and a communication. If you alter the genetics of the gut bacteria, by definition, you've completely altered the development and genetics of our own cells. Way back in the 70s, the, they developed this grand vision of being able to uh, splice in uh, high yield and drought resistance and all sorts of you know, uh, pest resistance. And they dreamt of patenting those genes and having proprietary ownership of these genes. Uh, and during the 80s, that indeed came about uh, from a, a number of court decisions. They believed they could make billions of dollars from these proprietary uh, gene transfers and to, to make food do certain things or crops do certain things. When the evidence came out that there were fundamental flaws in the genetics, they just did not want to know. They didn't, didn't want to do the research into these issues of food safety. 
and they went ahead with their development, yet they weren't doing the basic research. You see, GMOs are the product of an infant science, and now we are feeding that product to the entire population and it's known to create unpredicted side effects, and no one is testing to see if the rise in all these diseases since GMOs were introduced in the mid-90s is caused or promoted by these GMOs. If Monsanto's patent on a gene, that, if that patent on a gene gets into any, and I'll use the term, higher life form. So what does that mean? Birds, bees, animals, and the question I have to ask, what about human life? If, they, if Monsanto's patent gene gets into you, gets into me, does that say they own me? Do they own you? These are all questions that are very that the courts and our governments will have to be have to address. How far does the patents on genes on life go? There have been uh, over 140 lawsuits filed by Monsanto against farmers. Uh, including against those farmers who wanted nothing to do with Monsanto's genetically modified seed. When you ask Monsanto whether genetically modified seed is natural, they have two answers, yes and no. And it depends on which side of Washington, D.C. they're talking. If they're at the FDA or the USDA, they say genetically modified seed is absolutely no different than natural food. It doesn't need to be tested, doesn't need to be labeled, the public doesn't need to know if their food's been genetically modified because it's no different. Then we're on, when they're on the other side of Washington, D.C., at the patent office, and the patent office is saying, well, you don't deserve a patent because your seed is no different than natural food, they say, oh, no, it's not. It's completely different. We've invented something brand new. It's radically different, and it's so inventive we deserve not just one patent, we deserve entire portfolios of dozens and dozens of patents. Because the United States was the only country in the world, still is, that allowed genetically modified organisms or any organisms to be patented. Up until then, living organisms or their products could not be patented. So the patent for insulin, genetically modified insulin, produced in the E. coli bacteria, was given to Eli Lilly. Monsanto got it for RBGH, the bovine growth hormone. I have a book called Corrupt to the Core. In that book, I describe by quoting from a published speech by a Monsanto executive saying how they're going to control the whole world, not just by genetic modification, but they're going to take charge of the whole con whole world by influencing the White House, the White Hall, the French Parliament, and Canadian Parliament, and the Japanese Parliament. This is published information. How are they going to control the whole world? American people are beginning to become more aware and wake up to the fact that their government has been corrupted by corporations and the food that they're feeding themselves has possibly serious human health risks. In the European Union where labeling is required, uh, there's almost no genetically engineered food on store shelves, in restaurants, there's almost none of it planted. Today more than 50 countries around the world allow uh, labeling of genetically engineered foods. The FDA has received over a million comments from citizens demanding labeling of GMOs. 90% of Americans agree. So why no labeling? I'll give you one reason. The influence and the corruption of the political process by Monsanto. If you have an organic corn crop that sits next to a genetically engineered corn field, and it happens to tassel at the same time, and it happens to be downwind, you're gonna get your crop contaminated. In fact, even the seed stocks are becoming contaminated. I should have the right to be a conventional farmer. You should have the right to be an organic farmer if you're right. But if we have GMO farmers, you no longer, remember this, you no longer can have an organic farmer. You can no longer be a conventional farmer. You'll become a GMO farmer whether you like it or not. An expert at air pollution calculated how far corn pollen could travel in 24 hours, which is 
the maximum time that it can remain viable to cross-pollinate. It could travel under certain weather conditions over 500 miles. They want the public to sit down and not think about what happened before this, this uh, piece of meat got on my plate. What happened before this glass of milk sat on the table? We have an ethical responsibility, I believe, not just to other humans and to the future generations. We have an ethical responsibility to all living creatures. We have increasing numbers of retarded and autistic and genetically damaged people among us. We have increasing numbers of lethal allergies and potentially lethal allergies that coincide with the introduction of genetically modified food. We have increasing amounts of autoimmune problems. We have increasing amounts of pretty much everything. The pharmaceutical industry has no interest in having you well because they don't make any money if you're well. And the pharmaceutical industry is the biotech industry, and it is the agrochemical industry. Thousands of doctors are now prescribing non-GMO diets to every patient. In fact, the American Academy of Environmental Medicine urges all doctors to do so. They evaluated the animal feeding studies and said that there's a causal relationship between GM feed and disorders. And they urged the government to put a moratorium in place on GMOs, and of course, they're for labeling. My God, we are the sickest of the major countries in the world, and we're also becoming the dumbest of the major countries in the world. And the significance about that is, what a coincidence. This is the motivation of a government, and this is exactly where we are. Country like the United States has 20% of its GDP spent on healthcare costs, on trying to cure chronic disease. We're giving vaccines in children, we're giving all these other drugs, bad food, pesticides, hormones, everything getting into the system in animals and people. This is going to drive countries bankrupt. We're talking about people whose lives are either terminated through preventable diseases which were not prevented through the toxification of their bodies by toxic food. Total population of the world is about 7 billion now. They're saying by 2050, the population will grow to approximately 9 billion. And these companies and the governments all over the world are saying the amount of food in the world will have to be increased to twice the amount. The biotech industry is promising to feed the world with crops that'll have higher yields even though it's not the amount of food right now that's the critical issue, it's access to the food. And access to the food is largely an economic issue. There's no shortage of food. This is purely to, uh, due to corruption, because corrupt people, people in power, won't let poor people have their share. Now, since GMOs were introduced, there has been a dramatic increase in infertility in the United States. But there's significant evidence, both in laboratory animal feeding studies, as well as livestock experience, to point a finger at Roundup Ready crops as a potential cause. The newest information of a study just published a week ago shows that these toxins in the food have actually been associated with uh, an increased intensity of obesity, and this is found in salmon and rats. Uh, and there are other suggestions that they uh, produce long-term imbalances in fertility rates, in hormonal levels, and immune function, and the ability to digest food. Big agricultural and chemical companies don't want to label GMOs. What these corporations say is that labeling GMOs will increase our food bills. What I say is if they're so concerned about our bills, then they need to focus on a bigger price tag, and that's our health care costs. And we're not just talking about the cost of medications here. How about the cost of missed work and lost productivity when parents have to rush their child to the emergency room or to a doctor's office? And for the children, how about the missed school and summer camp? We're talking about the emotional and societal cost played out over and over again, hundreds of thousands and millions of times over. So these companies that are promising us to have abundant food, bring prosperity, they're lying 
and the governments are with them. I think if you really want to know the, uh, the true story about what corporations are doing in, in our society, about the various uh, harms uh, and dangers that they present, you can't rely on mainstream media. You have to go deeper and you have to go further. That's going to be a very important piece in, in us moving forward. The fact that uh, we do have those uh, sources of investigation that are not beholden to corporations or corporate media, and that we do have a mechanism in the internet for disseminating them broadly. We have this sort of common enemy that has allowed the profession, the healthcare professionals and the, the journalists and a whole variety of of individuals and uh, media sources who you wouldn't think would be aligned and typically many of us have disagreements on certain issues but we've all come together to realize that this is a, a very powerful enemy a, David, a classic David versus Goliath challenge and there's the only way we have any approach any possibility of ever winning this thing is if we work together as a cohesive group. So what you see is Monsanto genetically contaminating crops, monopolizing seed and destroying biodiversity, turning farmers into serfs through this indebtedness, corrupting government, undermining law and regulatory process, and worst of all, polluting scientific knowledge. They're polluting genetically, they're polluting politically, and they're polluting epistemically. They're even stealing our minds. Through the food we eat, through the television and programming and the news media we receive, that information alone constitute what you might call the nocebo information. That negative information about the world is causing us to become sick. The food we eat exacerbates that same problem. We are living in a situation where we must take back our own power. They can surround the Congress, they can surround the congressional offices back in their district, they can surround the Monsantos and the city groups. And that's what they got to realize, that that's the first stage. Because people showing up and massing together with, with agendas and with good artwork and signs and music uh, scares the hell out of these uh, politicians and their corporate masters. Let's use the power of government to support what we want, which is to know, have choices. Stand up that you should have the right, a human right to grow the foods and crops that you want. Americans have a right to know if their food is genetically engineered. It's time for labeling. It's time for people to know how their food is being produced. It is completely pro-capitalist to have things labeled. That's where you know what you're getting. And if the consumer, and the consumer over and over and over again says, they want to know. They want to know, they want the choice. But producers are freaked out because the choice is not going to be for them. We have to start now and not let more contamination exist and more danger to human health and the environment to the massive use of chemicals. So by stopping uh, GMOs and eradicating GMOs, you'd also then stop less chemical use and more danger to the environment. And all of us are very concerned about human health and the environment. What's going to get your children through this? and your grandchildren's generation, what are we handing off to them? What are we passing down to them? If the earth is us and it's our greatest legacy, what are they inheriting? And if you care about what you put in your body, you'll create as much of your own food supply as you can while you still can. Save seed, grow heirloom foods without any chemicals. I mean, there's dozens, if not hundreds of of methods and ways that we can go about correcting this and, and preventing this, but we have to start making those changes now. It's very important to be an organic farmer for the future of our children and our grandchildren and, our, and even ourselves in the food that we eat. Don't give up your rights, our human rights to this. If what's important to you is what goes into your body and what your health is now and will be, then you have to become activated. But to do that, we have to recognize there's a new science. And that new science completely pulls the foundation out under the conventional science of genetics and GMOs. That science is false and destructive. And the wake-up call is knowledge. Knowledge is power, lack of knowledge, a lack of power. And what this world is suffering from now 
is a lack of knowledge because we do have knowledge. We have knowledge that says how we can thrive, live to a ripe old age of over 100 very easily, and enjoy the experience of being on this beautiful planet. In most Native American cultures, their, their beliefs or their concepts were based on, will this last for seven generations? Whereas we're asking, what can get me through this year economically? One year, 12 months. That's one of our greatest problems right now, is to leap over that barrier, that mentality. Globalization has happened. It's here. But the, its effects have to be reversed. Globalization in a good way, where people learn about each other, people learn about each other's religions, to tolerate each other's spirituality, work together, work in nature, work with God. Because it's time for us to re-empower our lives. For 10,000 years, humans grew crops without chemicals. You know, it's time that we get mandatory labeling. It's time we cut down the biotech bullies to size. And then now, let's have that discussion again about chemical agriculture versus organic or traditional agriculture. The overwhelming majority of the public want us to produce food and to raise animals in the natural, healthy, humane way, uh, in a way that doesn't destroy the environment, public health, and the climate. Uh, and we're going to get to that point, but it's going to require, uh, as I often put it, the food fight of our lives. I'm looking at the food that's in the grocery store. They say it's safe, everybody eat more. On second thought, I don't really know. It was made with those GMOs. So I'm looking for the non-GMO label. Before I bring it home, I put it on a table. I want to know if it's verified so I don't harm myself with genetically modified. But they don't want you to know. They don't want you to know. Poison that grow. Profits that show. From those GMOs. Seeds that they sow. Hey, look, I don't want to eat poison. I don't want gene mutations at my dinner reservations. It's a food abomination. What they're doing to this fast food nation. They take artificial gene combinations, inject them in seed variations so they can grow their Franken food imitations while the side effects cause medical patients. Keep the profits alive while they're spraying all the food with name brand herbicides. And all the while they're spreading their lies. Monsanto destroy a farmer's lives. And the FDA just keeps it all going, saying it's safe, even though they all know it's just poison, stealing away your life. And that's what you eat, but genetically modified. They don't want you to know. They don't want you to know. Poison they grow, profits they show, GMO, no, the seeds that they sow, gonna hurt us, we know, told them to go, say GMO, no. FDA scientists said that GMOs might create allergies, toxins, new diseases, and nutritional problems, allergies, toxins, allergies, toxins, hot, 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 toxins, and they said, no testing necessary. Safety, huh? That's a corporate myth. If you don't believe me, listen to Jeffrey Smith. He's the man with the plan, gonna do what he can to help us all get those GMOs banned. But we need you to lend a hand, take a stand against this food stand. It's a mission for the health condition worldwide, cause we don't wanna live genetically modified. Living inside You know what's in it, don't believe the propaganda, the press will spin it Affects everybody, we all up in it Stand up to Monsanto, tell him, oh no you didn't Reject Franken foods in the store Demand on us labels so we can be informed We have a natural right to know what we buying Just say no to GMO Before our farms start dying Just say no to GMO These corporate crooks are lying Just say no to GMO This time we're not complying Just say no to GMO just not buying it. Just say no to GMO. No testing necessary. No insecticide. Just say no to GMO. No testing necessary.